How's everybody doing and welcome to the fish room. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at some awesome bristlenose plecos. So in this tank, just a little background, it's a 20 gallon long breeding for profit, uh, super red bristlenose plecos. I have a male and female in here and you can see the babies are kind of all around. There's a huge population of snails from overfeeding. Um, but they help clean up the tank. Anything left over, they'll get a hold of. There's some babies. Um, but more importantly, I'm in the middle of moving this male to another tank, so I want to breed them in this tank next to them, kind of give them a clean tank. I have a few super reds I'm growing out, but I'll probably move those. If not, they can kind of hang out together. No big deal. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a close look at that male. I'm going to move both the parents from this tank to this tank. Hopefully, I can let them calm down for a week or two. Uh, no breeding caves. Then I'll introduce the cave. Hopefully they put a little bit of size on them, they're eating some more food, and then I'll start breeding them again. But let's go ahead and move the male over. And the reason I'm doing that too, by the way, I don't know if I said it, so the babies can grow up here and I don't have multiple generations. Right now I have two generations of babies. I wanna grow them all up to sellable size. Hopefully by then they're breeding over here, they have a few batches of babies. I can sell the other tank, move the parents back, and just repeat that process. But now we're gonna look at the pleco. Here he's in the net, he's kind of getting spooked because I pulled the camera over him. He was just hanging out there. Very important whenever you're catching these guys, you use a very fine mesh net. But I'm gonna take him out and actually hold him and let's show you what it looks like. All right, so here we have him here. Hopefully you guys can get a good look on him. Uh, he's kind of putting his bristles out. Let me see if I can get a hold of him. As long as you know what you're doing, these guys can be handled. Um, you don't want to do it just for fun, but if you're moving them from tank to tank, uh, you can grab them right be below the mouth and on their head, and you can get a pretty good hold of these guys. So right there, however the lighting is, he's got some really nice red on him. It's obviously active, he's got some cool bristles, but let's go ahead and not stress him out anymore. And we'll put him into his tank. We can kind of see him swim out. So I got some purple deltas in here breeding too. But there, as you can see his bristles, and he's off. He's always in that breeding cave, so hopefully not giving him that cave for a few days. And um, putting his female in here, they can interact, but they most likely won't breed unless they have their cave. Uh, but it'll be able to eat more without any distractions. And then I can put their cave back in after about a week. And he is just a really cool looking fish. I really enjoy the super reds and I hopefully I can make them a lot more available in the next few months here. And just for a comparison guys, I do have the female here. I figure I'm gonna move her over anyways, may as well show you her. And this is a breeding uh, super red. So you can see how small she is. So sometimes when people say one to two inch plecos, you think it's kind of small. Depending on the strain, some of them don't get that big. So she's already had two batches of babies and I'll let her go in the tank right here. But she's got some really nice color and she doesn't get it. They're not gonna get a whole lot bigger than that. Um, that's one of the things I kind of want to work on. I'd like to get the females larger because I do have some bristlenose plecos um, of different colors where they get a lot larger than these guys so maybe that's something I can work on as well but still a really nice fish and a really good size for anybody's aquarium that's only got maybe a 20 gallon tank or a 10 gallon tank you can pull off have one of those if you get lucky enough to get the female if that's your goal this tanks really dirty I'm not gonna pull any of these guys out um, but these long fin commons are just doing super well they're usually pretty active. They're always moving around on the bottom of the tank. And I have a larger one of these guys I want to show. I almost did like a monster pleco video. I might still do it because I think it would be kind of cool. Uh, even though I kind of don't like it when people do things like that. But these guys are nice. I'm going to show you some other tanks of the long fin commons. I got the rams in there with them. But these guys were just kind of moving around as I was taking the camera. So show a little bit of action. I got a pretty big long fin in this tank here. I was trying to get some camera shots on her earlier. Maybe I'll add a clip in here. But she's really fanning out today, holding her fins really nice and they're super long trailers. So I actually might try to grab her and show you. Typically these guys would go on the sponge filter so you can just lift it up and then go underneath them. But right now she's next to it so I'll see if I can get her up in front of the glass. 
Just moving slow. Sometimes we're going real fast after plug goes. It's actually a lot harder to catch them than just taking your time. Letting them swim into the net. Get them against the glass. And right now, if I go straight up, I usually won't get them. But right there, she swam in. So I can move the net aside. And I got her right here. Here she is, guys. You can see how long those fins are on this fish. Really nice. And you can tell, at least I can tell, she's full of eggs. So... I really need to get her in with a male. I have her with a super red male right now, uh, but he's just too small. He can't kind of boss her around, get her into the cave. Um, she's just a really beautiful fish. Let me go put her back in her tank. This pluck over here is a young male. So this is what some people call a blue-eyed albino, or it's actually a blue-eyed leucistic. So if you look closely and the angelfish don't block our view, they don't have pink or white albino eyes. Uh, they have a darker eye, sometimes they're almost a blackish, but this one is blue. And you see the bristles on his nose are just starting to come out a little bit. So this guy will be a new male that I'll probably, I'm holding back for uh, breeders. But as comparison, so this is the blue-eyed leucistic bristle nose pleco. All these plecos I'm showing today that the angelfish will allow us to show are bristle nose plecos. There is the bristle nose and the bushy nose. They're pretty much the same fish. I never really understood the difference, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the bristle nose gets longer bristles and it gets a little bit bigger of a fish, maybe in the four to six inch range. Um, ideally, probably three, four inches for females, males around five inches if they're big. Um, in the bristle nose plecos, they're gonna really get maybe three or four inches max. So your males and females will be around three inches, even two and a half inches for some females. Um, but that's a little bit on the small side, but just to be clear, the only real difference is I think the bristle nose has longer bristles and they're bigger and they get to a larger size fish and the bushy nose is just a smaller size and citrus pleco. And that's basically, I mean, unless you get real into it, I think that's the only difference there. Good comparison right here. I have a female albino and you can see her color in her eyes. I mean, it's obviously has her pinkish red eyes and if there you go she moves a little bit for us i know it's not the best shot but she's in the same tank i figured i'd show you her i might even pull some of these guys out later in the video but there she is that's an albino standard fin female bristle nose pleco so very easy in this comparison the difference in the eyes so here we have three different fish. So some repeats, the top right is going to be a baby blue-eyed leucistic. Uh, the other darker ones with the spots are all going to be your common standard fin. And then on the far left you can see another one of the albinos. So for like kind of a comparison size, um, this container is maybe 5 inches wide. And these guys are something more so that you're going to find whenever you buy fish online or through a pet store, you're gonna get around this size. So you can't tell the males from females yet, but just showing these guys what you, they look like when they're babies, very similar, no bristles on any of them. And the color is pretty much the same. So what you see is what you get with bristle nose plecos. Once they hit around an inch, they're gonna change a little bit, but the color is gonna stay relatively the same. But I didn't want to skip over the common plecos because that's obviously something that's going to be most available and the albinos. So toss in one of the blue eyes in there just so you see them. But let's go ahead and look at some more adults. This tank we'll look at just briefly. But um, on top of the sponge filter you can see a young male uh, albino. So he's starting to get his bristles. It almost looks more like a bushy nose at this point. You can see how uh, small and thin those bristles are. A little bit on the older males they start getting a little bit longer and thicker and that's actually one of the blue eyes so some repeats here really hard to see and once I get close on these guys they always want to spook so that's why I'll grab them and show you sometimes but that's how big like the female you can kind of see next to my hand uh, common females will get this male here will get a little bit larger he's got the bristles on him so he's actually younger than her she's about maxed out I bred her before so this is kind of where I put any of my backup breeders and I also do like the large sale tanks. As I've said uh, all colors of bristlenose plecos come in long fin and standard fin. These three are all long fin so 
Here we're taking a look at an albino long fin, which I think I might have showed, but these all came from one spawn. So I have a pair throwing multiple genetics. So if you want to crossbreed stuff, usually you won't get things coming out right away, but within a few generations, you can definitely get some really cool outcomes. And then over here we have our super red, which is just a gorgeous fish. I cannot wait to grow this fish out and see what it can produce. But that is a long fin super red. Has a little bit of spotting in it. Hopefully we can get that out, but I actually like the spotting on some of them. And then this one here lightened up a lot in the container, but in the tank it looks awesome. It is a darker calico long fin. So you can see in the end of its tail and on the edges of him, he has some orange, but he's a lot darker on his body. But that actually is going to be a calico and he's not really doing any justice in the container but i'll show you these guys in the tank as well i've grown out just a dozen or so of these guys from a certain spawn but this is the tank they came from so you can see those are the reds we have some standard long fins which is actually what the parents look like that they came from there's those calicos whenever they're in the tank um that one's not quite as dark but they have that orange and kind of like a camo look on them this one here is definitely a calico next to that long fin albino. That guy in the back of the tank might have been the one we just had out. It's kind of hard to see in this tank, I apologize. Um, but there's a lot of cool different bristlenose plecos. So I kind of want to get all of them in one video and at the end I'll recap what everything is. Here's a nice male super red standard fin just kind of in the tank. And this guy's breeding with a common and they're actually throwing some regular babies. So if I were to breed these babies to each other whenever they grow up, who knows, maybe I'll get some calicos or some super reds. But as of the first generation, so you guys know, uh, normally you're not gonna get the best results whenever you're crossing two different strains. Um, but if you go ahead, take the time to do it, and then see all those babies on a sponge filter. If I grow these guys out and breed them to each other, male and female, most likely I'll get some calicos or some super reds within the F2s. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you're breeding stuff. If you want to get fast results, pre breed two of the same fish to each other. If you want to mix it up, you know it may take a few generations of line breeding to get the colors that you're looking for. Talking about some breeding projects and things going on, here I have some of the blue-eyed leucistic plecos. Um, I've produced probably hundreds if not thousands, actually definitely thousands of these plecos. So I had a tank and they were giving many babies every single month um, from one or another female. And out of all those plecos, I think I got maybe eight of them with this unusual marking. So I'd like to get a little bit closer, but we might lose them. There's a male in the cave right now. He kind of just moved. He's been hanging out there waiting for a female to get ready to breed and come in there. These guys are around, I want to say eight months old, maybe nine months old. And they could be younger. Some of them came from different times and they're pretty much ready to start breeding. So this is a totally different strain. It's not something I've seen before. And if we look over here, this one's got spawning in a different area. So it's definitely showing up throughout the fish. It's not a certain spot, it's not really random. Um, kind of losing her, but right there, she's got a spot on her back. And these guys, it's something I'm working on. I don't think it really exists. I've asked people to tell me otherwise, um, but I'm trying to create like a marbled bristlenose pleco or like a spot pleco, I'm just calling it right now. Um, I have never seen this one even on her back, has a little black spot in her fin. So if I can recreate these fish and I can line breed them, I want to see whatever the first generation, so they kind of be like F1s of my blue-eyed leucistic marble pleco plecos. If I can recreate that spotting and make it larger or multiple spots and have it carry from generation to generation that's kind of how you create your own strain because uh, these red plecos and things aren't natural someone created from line breeding and picking two of the nicest fish they have with polygenic colors and then they can recreate these things so this is a really cool fish that i'm excited to work on and kind of just show you guys if you want to know all the different types of plecos there's constantly adding new colors to that list so you gotta stay up to date with it and you gotta share what you know from other people and from your experience. So if you have a different type of pleco that you produce, 
put it aside and really uh, try to document and tell other people about it. I'm gonna go through and kind of recap all the different colors that we have, but I figured right here I have a pretty good shot of a lot of super red bristlenose plecos, and I am growing these guys out. Hopefully be on the website in the next month or so. I'm starting to get a uh, waiting list for them, kind of put them on back order, but I don't want to sell too many too early and get my numbers too low until I can grow up enough females and males that I can have some future breeders and make sure that I have them at a large enough size to sell. But if you're interested in stuff like that, I will be starting to sell those on my website, biancosfish.com. These guys are probably around sellable size and I only have a handful of them. But something like this, they're gonna be a lot hardier and that's something I wanna sell to you guys. With That's the breeder, but something like these over here, sometimes I wanna sell. Some of these are just way too small to start selling, but I wanted to share that with you. Thanks for watching guys. I know we kind of jumped around a little bit here and there, um, but just to kind of clarify, the whole point of this video is I want to show you all the type of plecos that I have and all that's out there. So normally you'll hear about this stuff, but you don't get to see it in person, or I guess in video at the same time, it's usually real spread out. So the only type of pleco that I don't have and I've never really seen good pictures of is people always ask for it is like the green dragon. So I'm sure it exists out there. I'm sure there's good qualities. There's not so good of quality of that type of fish. Um, if I found a really good one and someone was willing to sell it to me, I would definitely add that to the collection. Um, but as for now, I think I have everything that's possible for bristlenose plecos um, besides those in this fish room. So just to kind of recap, we have in long fin and standard fin, we have albinos, commons, blue-eyed leucistics, calicos, and super reds. So there's a lot of different colors out there and I'm trying to create them all. It's really cool when you get one pair of fish to produce multiple colors. And that's a lot of fun. So if you're breeding, crossbreeding, you're getting 50% this, 50% that, 25%, whatever it might be on other times you're breeding fish, it's really cool to kind of mess around with the genetics. And also important to not do that at times. You want to line breed things. You want to make sure you get the best color, the best finish, and not really mix it up too much. Because if you mix them too much, you just kind of have mutts and they're gonna be too dominant in certain genes. They're not gonna throw the ones you're looking for. So it definitely is important to take a break from looking for new colors and just line breeding what you have and really improving that and maintaining it. But thanks for watching guys. If you're not already, please go below, subscribe to the channel, Pittsburgh Pets. I do a lot of fish room stuff. I might even change the name over Bianco's Fish. Let me know what you think about that. And check out my website, biancosfish.com. Thanks again for watching guys and I will talk to you soon.